cultural history of the Western Hemisphere prior to the advent of the European conquerors is so dim that even although in the last 50 years a great deal of work has been done, we are still in no condition or position to arrive at conclusions or to attempt a general reconstruction of the situation. Broadly speaking, there is much evidence that the three Americas have been inhabited for a very long time. Some schools of modern anthropology are even suspecting that the records of human existence in the Western Hemisphere may be as long and old as anything to be found in the Eastern Hemisphere. Be this as it may, we are almost entirely dependent upon so-called natural records. Through the excavation of mounds and the examination of ruins, we try to piece together the story of Amerindian culture. The possibility of Asiatic influence, or even European influence, cannot be eliminated. Even when we think of comparatively early times, there is a general suspicion that this continent was populated from Asia. Certainly, there were streams of migration over what we call the Aleutian Island chain and Bering Strait. But to me, it has always seemed a little difficult to agree wholeheartedly with Dr. Hardwicker in his thinking in this direction. It seems to me that these ancient migrations do not explain the cultural pattern that existed here at the time of the conquest. It would seem more probable that travelers, adventurers, perhaps shipwrecked mariners, did reach the western continents from some other cultured area perhaps two, three, or four thousand years ago. Something happened here that is not fully explained by any of the records now available to us. Considering, for example, the possibility of migration from Asia by other routes than those at the far north, we know that certain currents are such that it is quite possible to drift from Asia uh, to the west coast of Central America. This drift would be very largely the result of currents which, however, are not so fortunate if the wanderer wants to drift home again. Thus, they would appear to have been the possibility of a one-way travel at a very early time from Asia. We also know that down in the Polynesian area, navigation by means of very large canoes was advanced perhaps further than we realize. We know that in these areas there are canoes that can and have traveled three, four, five thousand miles. That all this western land could have remained untouched by any contact with Asia or Europe or North Africa from the dawn of time until the Columbian voyages just does not seem to make sense. We do recognize the probability that the early Nordic peoples reached the northeast coast of America 
And if we may trust the records in Plutarch's voyages, Greek mariners may have explored the St. Lawrence River. Certainly things did happen. And these things left real and genuine marks upon the way of life in the Western Hemisphere. I have not as yet, quite intentionally, mentioned the Atlantic hypothesis. The possibility that an Atlantic culture may have actually laid the foundation for the civilization of the Americas. There is much to suggest in the legendary and lore of the primordial inhabitants of this continent that they were aware that their culture did not originate here. They have the world deluge myth in common with most other peoples of Asia and Africa. And they have a tendency in their recording to think toward an origin lying to the east of the American continent. This origin does not seem to be fully explained on the possibility of direct contact with Europe. For at any time when this contact would have been reasonable, Europe could not have provided that which these travelers report. So some way we feel that a cultural impetus was given to this, con this continent or these western lands at a time long distance. And that at the time of this cultural impetus, it arrived from people already themselves cultured. If, for example, such a movement had occurred 10 or 12,000 years ago, what record do we have anywhere of a civilization that could have equipped the Western peoples for the rise of such cultures as that of the Maya or the Inca. We do not know of any such culture. This would be pre-Egyptian. It would be before the rise of the Greek culture. It would be before, be before anything we know of Chinese culture. It would even probably antedate any reasonable concept we have of Indic culture, which may be the oldest in the world. Thus, from the probable areas from which such contact could be made, there was nothing that would have provided what these people claimed to have received. Perhaps then they are justified in assuming that they brought this knowledge from a land or area which has since been submerged and lost to history. If we do not wish to labor this point. Our main problem is to try to understand how certain institutions, almost identical with those of classical antiquity, which arose in the Western world, and resulted in the Americas becoming part of a broad world cultural pattern. We know that prior to the Colombian voyages, that the peoples of America were not all savage. We know that Cortes, when he saw for the first time the city of Mexico, said that it was the most beautiful city on earth. He called it the Venice of the Western Hemisphere. And he said there was no city in, U in Europe that was its equal. These people, therefore, had advanced far in art and sciences and were gradually building themselves a solid political situation. This, however, was interrupted and was never permitted uh, to mature. Yet we must also realize that the city of Mexico, with all its grandeur, 
with the Aztec Toltec culture complex behind it, was relatively uncivilized in comparison to the great empire of the Maya lying further to the south. For if the Aztec people uh, were coming into cultural maturity, it was because they had derived their inspiration and their guidance from the more southerly tribes. It is hardly right to think of these people as tribes. They were, they were much more than this. They were nations. Uh, they were not only nations, but they were great social commonwealths. They had good laws. And with that strange directness of spirit, which so often marked uh, these old cultures, uh, they had found remedies for many evils which plague us even today. Many of their laws were wiser and better than our laws. And from what records we can find, particularly in the very marvelous the compilations of Fra Bernardino de Sardun, we know that these laws were kept, that virtues were actually cultivated by the people, that governments for the most part were benevolent. And as Stuart Chase points out, uh, the Central American people hold the world's peace record, a great culture, a great civilization that lived and dwelt and flourished in peace for over 500 years. This uh, situation was no doubt due in part to some kind of relative isolation. By the time the Maya culture had reached its zenith, there seems to have been little evidence that these people were aware of the situations existing in other parts of the world. The three Americas functioned in a strange aloofness. Uh, their cultures developed with comparatively little interruption. They had few of the rugged inducements to intensive competition that we know. Even though some of the tribes were warlike, this warlikeness was very primitive. It was not a highly sophisticated type of warfare. And among the Mayas, if it did arise, it was entirely defensive. And these people were not, by any means or nature, militant. In fact, they were probably one of the most pacifistic of all nations to achieve cultural maturity. Now, when we speak of the great complex of the Maya or Ipsa culture, the Maya is one of those words that doesn't belong, but which we will never get rid of. This culture was not a, a small thing. It was a great culture. And uh, had it been known earlier to Europe and Asia, probably would have been uh, given precedence over even the cultures of Egypt and Greece in our estimation of human progress. But because it was far away and late of discovery, we have already established ourselves so firmly upon a Greek or Latin civilization that we had no intentions of changing our point of view. In the so-called jungles of Central America, extending from middle Mexico south 